Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Mr. Sacedo's YouTube videos. Today we're going to be going over a brief introduction to the types of elements that you can find on the periodic table, so make sure that you follow along with your note packet and that you fill in everything as you see. So, uh, there are three main types of elements that you can find on the periodic table, and the first of those are called metals. So, metals are found to the left of the zigzag line on the periodic table. So, if you haven't, take out your periodic table, and I'm going to draw the zigzag line on this copy on this slide because it doesn't have one. But you start at boron and you sort of zigzag your way like a stepladder all the way down. So when we say to the left of the zigzag line, what we mean is, you know, sort of to the left of this line. Now, the only major exception, which you might want to underline this or something, is hydrogen. So hydrogen all the way over here in the corner um, is not an example of a metal, but practically everything else to the left is. So if I were to, I guess I could just sort of in general scribble over that. Uh, those would all be considered metals. Here's a slightly better picture of sort of what that would look like if we colored it in. So all the metals are in green on this periodic table. But what are the properties that it has? Well, normally these metals are solids. So they're normally going to be solids on the periodic table. In fact, there's really only one liquid metal on the periodic table at room temperature, and that is mercury. Uh, the next term means the ability to carry electricity and or heat. And that's what we call a good conductor. Okay, and so conductors are things that, you know, sort of help to carry electrical charge or heat, and metals are excellent ones. That's why we use them in electronic devices. Uh, the ability to be rolled into a thin sheet. So that means, like, if you had a rolling pin, you could flatten that into a very thin sheet. So that would be the term malleable. And so malleable, malleability. Uh, ability to reflect light, a.k.a. shininess, uh, that's what we call luster, but the adjective form is called lustrous, so that's sort of the term we're going to be using. And then uh, feels heavy. These are high density, if you compare them to, you know, sort of other elements out there that are non-metals. Uh, these metals have a very high density. And also, probably one of the most important things is that they react with acids. And so, um, because they react with acids, that makes them kind of totally different than non-metals do. Alright, next up we have the non-metals. And again, I have to draw my zigzag line. At least it's already on your periodic table. Uh, non-metals are found, so right here, non-metals, they're found to the right of the zigzag line. Again, the exception being hydrogen. So if I were to use, I'll use red, I guess, uh, these guys over here are all non-metals, with the exception of hydrogen. So hydrogen all the way over here in the corner, it's also an example of a non-metal. So again, for a better view, right over here we have our colored in version of the periodic table. So what sort of properties do these guys have? Well, the thing about non-metals are that they tend to be gases. You'll see all of the gases that we find on the periodic table are kind of over there in the corner. Or if they are not going to be a gas, they're going to be a very weak sort of solid. And so there's some weak solids over there in the corner. Uh, they're not able to carry electricity and or heat as well as metals do. Um, in fact, they're the opposite. They're called insulators. But uh, the term we're going to use is bad or poor conductor. So they are bad or poor conductors. Uh, we have that they're easily broken apart. So if they are a solid, they're going to be easily breakable, obviously with the exception of diamond. But uh, they're very brittle. And so that's the term we're going to use. Not able to reflect light. That would be dull, the opposite of lustrous. And uh, they feel very, very light because they are low density. And those are the, the real differences between, you know, sort of metals and non-metals. So what do we call elements that sort of have properties of both metals and of non-metals? Well, there are two possible terms, metalloids or semi-metals. They're synonyms, so you'll see both used interchangeably. Now, metalloids are elements that are found touching the zigzag line. So here's the way that kind of works. I'll draw the zigzag line again. So anything touching the zigzag line, with the exception of aluminum, because aluminum is actually a metal, 
uh, is an example of a metalloid. Now, depending on what sort of periodic table you use or something like that, you might get different sort of mixtures of what's considered a metalloid and what isn't. But these are the metalloids that we're going to be kind of including on this list. So we've got, you know, boron, we've got silicon, germanium, arsenic, antimony, tellurium, polonium, and astonine. Those are going to be our uh, elements that are touching the zigzag line, and so they're going to be considered metalloids. Now notice, again, the only one that is not included in that group right here is aluminum. Aluminum's touching the line, but it is definitely considered a metal in all situations. So what are the properties of these metalloids or semi-metals? Well, all of them are solid. So every single one of them would be considered a solid at room temperature. Uh, they carry some electricity and or heat, and so the term there is semiconductor. And so the thing about semiconductors are that they're very good at either keeping a charge, but if you shock them or use enough energy, then they become an insulator. And so they are used in a lot of electronics for that reason, because they can seamlessly switch from being non-metallic and sort of not conducting electricity, and then they can switch to being metallic, which means that they can conduct electricity. And remember that, you know, electronic devices all run off of a series of ones and zeros, and so the zero would be it acting like a non-metal, and the one would be it acting like a metal. Uh, in this picture, again, this gives you sort of the list of um, metalloids. The only one that they don't include, but I do, is right here at the bottom, and I believe that's polonium. So, uh, easily broken apart. Now, you should recall that that was termed brittle. Uh, they're able to reflect some light, so they are semi lustrous. And then last, but certainly not least, they're able to be rolled into a thin sheet, relatively speaking, and so they are also going to be considered malleable. So as you saw in that last slide, semi-metals or metalloids have qualities of both metals and of non-metals, and so these are the metalloids that you need to remember, so make sure that you sort of write those down as our examples. And obviously because some of these symbols you are aware of and other ones you're not, uh, if you need to write down their names, that also might be useful. So you have this Venn diagram in your notes, and I want you to fill it in. So what we're doing is comparing and contrasting metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. And so over here on the left-hand side, I would like you to uh, fill in the qualities that we talked about that only metals have. And then on the far right side, I want you to put down the qualities that only nonmetals have. In the middle, now this is going to look very good because it's black, but um, in the middle here, in this weird sort of softball looking shape, uh, these are the qualities that only metalloids have. Okay? And then the space in between each one are the qualities that are shared by both, there we go, that's perfect. Uh, so right over here, this big blobby thing. Uh, these would be qualities that are shared by both metalloids and nonmetals. And then over here, these would be qualities that are shared by both, again, metalloids and metals. So it's kind of an expanded uh, Venn diagram. And uh, that's really it. So again, over here in the corner, you have only metallic qualities. Over here, you have things that only describe nonmetals. In the spaces in between, so in these little spaces in between, uh, you have the qualities of both semi-metals or metalloids and their respective opposites. So, you know, on the left, metals. On the right, nonmetals. And then right here in the middle, you have the qualities that only apply to metalloids. All right, if you have any questions, make sure you ask, and that's it.